<laughs> Sign language. It's fascinating, isn't it? Well, I feel bad for not being ready when you came to pick me up. But you did say you were coming at 8. I said that Tuesday. But the next day I told you we had to pick you up at 7.30. Do you remember? It's not about forgetting. Can't forget something you were never told. It's no big deal. Could you please tell your rehabilitation project that sticking a camera in other people's faces, particularly at a party other than one's own, should cease and desist? Somehow I think you edited my comments. You still got the point. Troy's making a mini documentary. Documentary. He's making one of those for art school. It's called A Week in the Life of Troy. Huh. Your housewarming party is part of his week, so it's part of the film. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Troy likes your place. Especially the artwork. Uh. My favorite is the colorful one behind you. Oh. It's a McLean. It looks like his piece called City at Night. That's exactly what it is. Uh, an artificionado. <sighs> Not really, I... Uh... What city is it? Because I don't think I'd like to go there. As a rather astute patron of the arts, I had the good sense to purchase it a few years back for um, $10,000. That cost $10,000? Get me a brush and some paint and I'll make you one for 20 bucks. <laughs> Well, I appreciate your uh, generous offer, but I don't think that yours would increase in value the way this one has, particularly after the artist's death. It's now worth uh, approximately three or four times as much. Actually, five times. At least the real one is worth that much. It sold at Sotheby's last week for $50,000. The real one? Well, this is a copy. But uh, a very good copy. Uh, <laughs> you're saying that my McLean is a fake? No, 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 that, that can't be. I, I have uh, certificates of authenticity. I'm afraid those are easier to forge than the paintings. I worked in art fraud at the Bureau in New York before I got transferred to D.C. Still keep a hand in it. I'm sorry, but unfortunately, this painting isn't worth the canvas it's painted on. Seems like a case for the FBI. If I live to be a hundred and never see the seven wonders, that'll be all right. Should my tender heart be broken, I will cry those teardrops from nowhere. Hunt him down. We will not rest until this, this vile creature, this destroyer of all that is beautiful and good is brought to justice. We're looking for an art forger, Miles, not Hannibal Lecter. Only a few gradations of separation on the slimy scale of criminality. And we're going to need the resources of the entire team to put this miscreant behind bars where he belongs. Rick, as nice a guy as he seems to be, could have been mistaken. I had an authenticator go over the painting. It's definitely a forgery. And I'm out $50,000. You only paid $10,000 for it. 
I checked a database used by art galleries to post and track incidents of art theft, forgery, and fraud. It seems Miles isn't the only one who bought a fake McLean. Miranda Hogan. Who's going with me? <clears throat> Tara, can you pass me four coffee stirs? Whoever draws the short one gets to be Miles' partner on this. You bought the painting at a gallery three years ago, is that correct? Yes, the gallery space had been rented out to a third party to showcase the piece. A select group of art collectors, at least that's what the letter called us, was invited to privately view the piece and submit a sealed bid. The letter also said that a uh, well-known family uh, who wished to remain anonymous had recently come upon hard times financially. They wanted to discreetly liquidate some of their art holdings, one of which was McLean's City at Night, which supposedly had been authenticated, and they had asked this third party to do it for them. Uh, oh, well, I feel your pain. I, too, am a victim. Different gallery, same M.O., same painting. So you share my embarrassment at paying $8,000 for something that is completely worthless. You only paid $8,000? What a comfort to know that someone who shares this painful experience is on the case. Perhaps this is one that will actually get solved. <sighs> Did you have a nice trip to where you were a minute ago? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, thanks. Everything okay? Yeah, I think. I'm not sure. I'm probably making a big deal about nothing. But Charlie was supposed to change the oil in my car today. I dropped it off on my way to work before he was there. I just got a page from Tori saying Charlie didn't know why my car was at the gas station. I told. Charlie, a few days ago. But it's like he didn't remember having the conversation. He didn't remember what time you were picking him up last night, either. My grandmother had Alzheimer's. It started the same way. And I keep getting this bad feeling. Maybe you should check it out a little more before you come to any conclusions. I mean, we all forget sometimes. We all have bad days. You're right. It, it might be nothing. Pink reports. Winston Davis makes the paints formerly used by the real artist and currently used by the forger. Pretty high-end stuff. Only seven stores in the D.C. area carry it. That's seven stores closer to our goal. Thomas, let's go! Couldn't we draw straws again? Best two out of three? We're looking for somebody who buys Winston Davis paints, uses this kind of canvas, stretched over this kind of frame. Anyone leap to mind? Well, let's see, uh, well, there's a whole little artist colony. <laughs> That's what they like to call themselves, the artist colony. And they use Winston Davis paints. A whole colony. Of course, they don't use James Frames. James Frames? Well, it's not like James Frames, like Frames' is his last name. It's just he makes frames. So oh. this frame is a James Frame. You see what I mean? Yes, yes, yes. So which of your clientele uses James Frames? Lots of people. Nobody likes to use this kind of can. Could we not take the scenic route to whatever conclusion you're about to reach? Low blood sugar. He gets cranky when he hasn't eaten. Uh, um, Tim. Tim. Tim Monahan's got to be. He's the only person I know who uses all three. <laughs> Would you happen to know where we might find Mr. Monahan? Yeah. Hi. Tim Monaghan? Yes. Do I know you? No, but you're about to. Oh, boy. I bought the paint, I bought the canvas and frames, and I painted the forgeries, but I am not really a crook. I'm just a guy trying to make a living. You're a guy trying to make a living as a crook. Who did you sell the paintings to? His name's Pete Cook. He hired me to do them. I guess he sells them to people. And in so doing, commits fraud. He sells them as the real thing, the originals. I don't know anything about that, but even if that's true, the people who buy them, they don't like art. They like the idea of art. They pursue it as an investment. It's just commerce with them. I happen to love that painting.
Oh, there you are. Hi, Charlie. Your car's oil has been changed, and I threw in a lube job, too. Thanks. How much do I owe you? Your money's no good here. You know that. Charlie. But I could be persuaded to accept a dinner of your world-famous meatloaf as payment. It's a deal. Good. Everything's OK? Yeah, fine. You know, it's great having Troy here helping out. He's been a real blessing. Gives me more time to do some other things, things I've put off. <sighs> like cleaning out Thelma's closet. Three years she's been gone now. All those clothes in good condition, it's somebody else could be making use of them. You should have told me I would have helped you. Oh, <laughs> appreciate that, but it's something I wanted to do by myself. Brought back a lot of memories. Some laughter, some tears. Anyway, I'm uh, gonna finish up tonight and take them to Goodwill tomorrow. Something I think she would have wanted me to do. <laughs> but perhaps a whole lot sooner. <laughs> <laughs> He's taken enough shots of me. It's time he took some of someone whose face won't break the camera. Our sting, also known as Operation Performance Art, is as follows. Forger Tim Monahan will meet with the brains of this little operation, Mr. Pete Cook, tomorrow at 1500 hours. Location, the park near the Smithsonian. Our forger will be wired. Jack, Bobby, and Demetrius will be in the park, feeding us video through pen and watch cams. Tara, Thomas, Levi the Wonder Dog, and myself will be in the surveillance van. Now, Monahan says it's a regular gig. He turns over a forged piece of art, and Mr. Cook orders another one, just like clockwork. So, once Mr. Cook has exchanged money for the forgery and commissioned another one, all recorded for posterity and the judicial system, we move in, and Mr. Pete Cook is mine. Very thorough and precise, just the way we like it. I don't think the invasion at Normandy was this well planned. <laughs> Bobby, Metro PD, line three. Thanks, Liz. Sue, how's Charlie? He's good. Uh, some stuff was going on with him, personal stuff, that I think has had him preoccupied, but I think he's going to be fine. Sue, Jack. Feel like going for a ride? Where are we going? Bomb squad just called. It's not good. The car in question was hit by another car. As far as we could tell, it was a total accident. The driver of the car that was hit got out and took off running. Yeah, well, normally if uh, someone was going to run away, you'd expect it to be the guy who caused the accident, not the guy who was hit. The driver of the car sits right over there. Said she looked down, didn't see the sharp curve. She admits that was her fault. Anyway, when the paramedics went in to help the passenger of the car that was hit, saw the explosives and backed off. They called us, we called you. So you don't know if the passenger's dead or alive? Nobody's seen him move since the crash. We're all set up. Can't get a clear look at him. Any sign of explosives in the rest of the car? Front and back seats look clear, but the robot can't get good angles on the rest. Righto, keep the area cordoned off and your eyes on that monitor. Let me know immediately if the passenger moves. How are we looking, Shane? Trunk looks clear.
paramedics were right. This guy's wired and he's dead. Looks like we've got a suicide bomber. Okay, we've alerted Homeland Security about the suicide bomber. If we can't eliminate the threat within the hour, they're gonna raise the threat level. A witness saw the driver of the crash car drop something as he was running away from the accident. It turned out to be a map of the Metro City shopping mall. That mall caters to families, children. We're chasing cards without a conscience. Which is why this case is our top priority. You're gonna have to live with your phony art a bit longer, mate. Already called our forger and conveyed that he should hold off. No idea who our bomber is. His fingerprints and facial pattern recognition didn't match anyone on our international watch list or our domestic databases. He's a John Doe. Yeah, now the suicide belt that he had on was very sophisticated. Dynamite wired together and wired to the bomber. Battery power detonator to make the dynamite explode. Detonator switch so that the guy could set it off whenever he wanted to. Is that why the bomb didn't blow up on impact? Yeah, this belt was made by a professional bomb maker. Right, it's the same design used by Hamas, Hezbollah, or Al-Qaeda. These bomb makers are like gold bullion to terror groups. They're more dangerous than suicide bombers themselves. Sometimes I wish I didn't learn the things I've learned on this job. Forensics is analyzing collected hair and fiber samples from the car. Fingerprints on the steering wheel didn't match any in our database or the passenger, but they did match prints on the dynamite wired into the belt. Which probably means the driver is the bomb maker. We did get one solid clue. The dynamite at the crash site is registered to McPhee Construction. The company's legit. I'm not sure about its people. Only my foreman and I have the code. We'll need to speak to your foreman as well. He's not in today. Took a couple of personal days. We just finished a big job. He wanted a break before we start the next one. What's his name? Ali Saeed. His heritage is Arabic, but he was born and raised here. Trust me, he's as American as you or me. Is he in town or did he go somewhere? I don't keep track of his social calendar. But Ali's been with me nine years. I trust him with my life. Your printout indicates there should be 19 cases of dynamite, but I only count 18. I don't understand how this could happen. We'll need Mr. Saeed's picture, his personnel, file and contact information, and uh, we should probably get a copy of your social calendar as well. Oh, he just walked in. Miranda Hogan, line one for you. Fellow victim of art fraud. Oh, yes, of course. Ms. Hogan, hello. Well, it's not moving quite as quickly as we'd like due to unforeseen circumstances. Well, you can sleep tonight assured I want to catch the perpetrator just as much as you do. Yes, I am on the case. I'm glad you're glad. Yes, I can understand you. The camera loves you. Troy emailed it. Okay, everyone, heads up. Homeland Security has just raised a threat level. Any intel from any of our informants? No sign of Foreman Ali Saeed. It's like he dropped off the face of the earth. Neighbors say he's a nice guy. Quiet. Neighbors always say that about guys who go on killing sprees. Saeed's financial situation raised the red flag. Big deposits, big withdrawals. SOG's watching his house now. Tara, anything from the construction company security system? It's very impressive. Uh, computerized, high-tech, seemingly impenetrable. No signs it was hacked. Makes it definitely look like an inside job. McPhee's got nothing to tie him to the suicide bombers. He's a member of the Better Business Bureau, Chamber of Commerce, all-around stand-up guy. So the missing Mr. Saeed keeps moving up our list of suspects. Right now, I say he's number one with a bullet. The car was from a chop shop. It had parts from four different cars and a stolen license plate. Perfect way not to be traced. Unless you leave purple fibers in said chopped car. Forensic says the fibers are laced with a high-end fire retardant used in airline seats. That fiber in that color is rare. How rare? Very. 
unless you're sitting in a business class seat on Pan Arabian Airlines. It's against airline policy to disclose manifests to anyone other than authorized family members. We respect your concern, but we have an obligation as well to ensure the safety of our citizens, and your plane landed on U.S. soil. Life and liberty for all who come to America, except Muslims. You think we are all terrorists. We're not saying all Muslims are terrorists, but all Al-Qaeda terrorists are Muslim. If we knew they were all Norwegian Lutherans, then we'd be looking for people with blonde hair, blue eyes, names like Johnson or Anderson. This is not personal, but frankly, it would be irresponsible of us not to recognize reality. You'd be mad at the ones who have hijacked your group, not us. We're just trying to protect the innocent, including you. Ms. Rashid, we understand you were a flight attendant in business class on a flight to DC two days ago. That's correct. One of the passengers in business class purchased a ticket from Saudi Arabia, changing planes in DC and then flying on to Mexico City. Is there a problem with that? The flight manifest says that he landed in DC, but that he never took the connecting flight to Mexico City. Which means he's in America illegally, and we're concerned as to why. It may be disturbing. The person is deceased, but I really need you to look at it. Mr. Nazim Jara, 4B. I asked him if he wanted a headset. He started screaming at me for speaking to him unless he spoke to me first. He called it an affront to Islam, said he was going to file a formal complaint with my supervisor. Thank you. Appreciate your help. We need security surveillance video from this terminal. Our failed suicide bomber now has a name, Nazim Jarrah. He held a Saudi Arabian passport, but there's no mention of him on any watch list. Now that's the kind of terrorist career we like to hear about. Oh, for one and out of the game, for good. Here we go. Got the chop shop car. Pre-accident with the driver. Tara, can you zoom in on what was said? It's not English. It's probably Arabic. Tara, can you run that tape back again? Jihad. It's a word for holy war, jihad. It's the start of it, but the word is longer than that. Jihadi? Yeah, I think that's it. Jihad is holy war. Greeting someone as jihadi means they're holy martyrs. Then we still have two suicide bombers loose in America. Airport surveillance video shows four terrorists involved with the plot. Terrorist one, Nazim Jarrah, killed at the car crash. Terrorist two, the driver, we assume bomb maker. Number three and number four are the uh, new entries on our board. I ran facial pattern recognition on Terrorist three and Terrorist four. No matches in any of our databases. Ran the same test on the video of the driver and came up with 81 potential matches. Inexact matches because of the limited data. I should mention Foreman Ali Saeed was one of those 81 potential matches. SOG is still at his house. No sign of him. So keep regular contact with SOG. I want hourly updates. D, Miles, keep checking out the local chop shop. See if we can get any trace on who bought or sold the silver sedan. Jack, let's try and trace the uh, flight paths of uh, Terrorist 3 and 4, see if we can find where they flew from and paid for their tickets. Miles, Miranda Hogan, a.k.a. Art Fraud Victim, is online too. She's already left two messages. Oh, I'm busy. Handler. And Troy is here. He wants to talk to you and me. We thought Charlie was acting differently because he was giving his wife things away. And it made him sad. But now Troy thinks it's more. They're at the gas station. Charlie's in front, Troy's in the back, checking his video camera. He thought Charlie had things covered. Charlie got very angry because Troy wasn't helping. Troy knew he was wrong. But that's not the problem. It's how Charlie reacted. He flew off the handle. He was really angry. Troy had never seen Charlie like this. 
He was overly upset, out of proportion. Like my grandmother. Sorry to interrupt. SOG just called. McPhee construction foreman Ali Saeed finally found his way home. We gotta roll. Okay. We'll take Charlie to the doctor. We'll help him. I have to go. I, when I'm done, I'll page you. We will help Charlie. I didn't sell or steal any dynamite. This is harassment. You're only targeting me because of my ethnicity. I'm having a deja vu. Have we been here before? The guy we found with the dynamite happens to share your ethnicity. But in this case, you could be from Mars and you'd still be a suspect. You're one of two people who had access to where the dynamite was stored. And you're the only one of two people who conveniently disappeared when the dynamite went missing. Your bank account shows you recently came into large amounts of money. Something you'd like to share, Mr. Said? I went to Atlantic City. I gamble. Sometimes I lose. In this case, I won. Nobody's paid me off. I just get an itch, and sometimes I have to scratch it. And maybe sometimes you need some help scratching it. Manning. A little monetary yeah. advance for a security code? I'd never steal from Mr. McVie. Okay. I owe him everything. I disappeared because I promised Mr. McVie that I'd quit gambling. Sue, so, Jack. Terra's enhanced imaging has matched a driver's license picture from Virginia. Our possible bomb maker has an address and a name. And it's not Ali Saeed. But it may be the guy who paid Mr. Saeed for the explosives. FBI, freeze! Freeze! I'll get confirmed! Bobby. The bomb lab. Okay, guys, the subject we apprehended during the raid was not the bomb maker. It's terrorist number three. Been trying to turn him all night. So far, he's been given the big no comment to any and all questions. SOG is at the bomb maker's house. So far, nobody's made a return appearance. ERT's analyzing every inch of that lab. They're running the fingerprints and tracking down all the materials and who bought them. Well, what we do know is that 60 sticks of dynamite are missing. So is the bomb maker. So is our last remaining suicide bomber. Hello. I think one of our terrorists just came online. And how do you know that? Is his screen named terrorist the FBI is looking for? Close. Unstoppable at freeorg.net. Take a look. This is the laptop we took from the foreman Ali Saeed. Foreman Ali clicked open an unsolicited email from the screen name Unstoppable two weeks ago. The email was blank. He probably thought nothing of it. What he didn't know is spyware was secretly downloaded to his computer. Spyware? It's a software that lets somebody see every keystroke, every email, every chat that's done on a computer. And not just see, record. Including any password entered, such as the one to guard the access code to where the dynamite is stored. Big Brother's watching you. Except in this instance, Big Brother is a terrorist. Which means Foreman Saeed may be innocent after all. The terrorists took the easiest route to stealing the security code. They didn't try to hack the sophisticated firewall of McPhee Construction. They hacked a vulnerable employee on his home computer. So what do we do? Send Unstoppable an email, ask him to give himself up? Well, you can ask him in person. I've tracked his internet hookup. He's online at a cyber cafe, the Java Terminal. Keep him online until we get there. No problem. I'm chatting with him right now. My screen name's Lola if anybody's interested. We're here. Demetrius has the perimeter sealed. Tara, there's no one here on our list. Unstoppable is still online at the cafe. I just told him he sounded cute.
Um, are you unstoppable? Yeah. Why, you know my work? Uh, no. But I'm with the FBI. We'd like to talk to you. Whoa! Whoa! She killed him! Come on. Well, mate, the good news is you're going to make the Hackers Hall of Fame. The bad news is you're going to be in the terrorist wing, along with Bin Laden and Saddam Hussein. Well, all I did was try to impress Zoe. This Zoe? Yeah, she dared me to hack into something. I did it. Yeah, well, here's the problem with online dating. When a woman tells you she looks like that, she could look like this. How did they contact you? They emailed me. Where'd they find you? There's an underground hacker site called New Anarchy. People chat, dare each other to break into sites around the world. There was a challenge to hack Francis Elysee's palace, so I hacked Jacques Chirac. He uh, hacked into the office of the uh, president of France. So right after that is when Zoe emailed? Like she was a hacker groupie. Did they want you to hack into anything other than McPhee construction? Yeah, the Office of Homeland Security. What do they want from the Homeland Security? The time and location of something called ISIP. ISIP? No idea what it means. I figured I'd find out once I got on the site, but I couldn't hack the firewall. Did you tell Zoe you couldn't get into the site? <sighs> when you were 15, would you tell someone you thought looked like Zoe you couldn't do something? I've set up a mirror site to mimic Homeland Securities. We're betting ISIP's the suicide bomber's next target. ISIP is the International Symposium for Infrastructure Protection. The 10 top security leaders of NATO countries are in the US to attend this meeting. We're going to set up a sting, make them think that Unstoppable has hacked his way into the meeting schedule for ISIP. The Essex Plantation in Virginia is used for meetings of this level. The best thing about this place is it's only one road in, one road out. Tara, set the meeting for tomorrow. I'll work with Nathan to make it look like he hacked the site and got them the information. If they want to come online to have him prove it's legit, they'll come into our little world. Nothing on the internet is what it seems. Tara is Lola, our terrorist is Zoe, the website is a fake. Kind of like the art world. The best we can determine, we still have the bomb maker and one suicide bomber on the loose. Now the good news is that our sting gives us the element of surprise to catch them. The bad news is, once the terrorists realise they're being raided, the suicide bomber will, in all probability, try to wire his detonator into his vest and blow us all up. How long does it take to wire the detonator? Minute, minute and a half. Not much of a margin for error, but failure's not an option. I got a visual. The driver looks like the bomb maker, no passenger. Suicide bomber must be in the back of the van. Copy, we are in raid position. Confirm that. Interesting how he was more than willing to make bombs for other people to wear, but not all that anxious to die himself. Yeah, it's funny how that works. I suppose you can get back to your art collecting. Funny, I'd all but forgotten I'd been swindled by a two-bit con man. Thanks for reminding me. You didn't hear. Mr. Peter Cook, the previously mentioned two-bit con man, has disappeared. Like vapor into the night. I found out where he lived, but... Now there's nothing there but dust. He somehow got wind that Miles was on to him, and in just the last day or two, has apparently moved on to more colorful pastures. I was this close. At least you've got something to remember him by. And who knows, maybe one day an almost original McLean will be worth, um, 
I don't know, a few hundred bucks. In the meantime, it's a nice facsimile. I mean, after all, it is about the art, isn't it, Miles? And most of us can't tell the difference. Hmm. Camera still loves you. I was thinking about Charlie. Now that this case is over, I need to go talk to him. Did you see what I saw? I saw you signing that you didn't know what to say. No. Here. Oh, I didn't even notice Charlie back there the first time. Neither did I, but watch this. Charlie. Charlie. Hey, buddy. When did you guys get here? A few minutes ago. Boy, I sure must have been caught up in my work not to notice a pretty girl like you stopping by my shop. That's one explanation. But I'm wondering if maybe there's another. Not sure I know what you're talking about. Troy, Lucy, and I, we were concerned about you. I had told you some things, and it seemed you didn't remember them. And then you were so mad at Troy. That's not like you. We had a concern. You might have Alzheimer's. But that's not it, is it? Those things I told you, it's not that you didn't remember them. You couldn't remember them because you didn't hear me saying them. You're having trouble with the hearing, aren't you? Talking to you right now, aren't I? I saw in Troy's video someone calling to you. You didn't respond. And you didn't hear me calling your name just a minute ago. I didn't want to admit it. And a few days ago, a customer was asking me for help. I was working in my office, and I didn't notice him, didn't hear him. The guy finally got in my face because he thought I was just being rude. And he yelled at me. I was embarrassed. And I took it out on Troy. I wanted it to be his fault. <laughs> Pretty selfish. Especially consider who I'm talking to. I've been deaf as long as I can remember. To be hearing all your life and feel that slipping away, it has to be scary. But you can get hearing aids. I don't know. I'm a pretty old dog. Hard to teach me a new trick. Is it that? Or the fear of people seeing your hearing aid? and knowing your secret. Some people think I should speak and not sign. And some people think I should sign and not speak. Some don't think I should have a hearing dog. Well, I sign and I happen to speak and I have Levi because that's what works for me. God made me the way I am. And it's okay with me. I like me. And I like you. And I will, no matter what. 
And I suspect everyone else will too. Don't let pride keep you from using something that could work for you. Miles, someone here to see you? Miranda. I've been waiting for an update on our case for several days. Has the perpetrator been apprehended? Well, a number of perpetrators have been apprehended over the last few days, uh, just not the ones you're referring to. You said you were on the case. You said you had a plan. Well, I am. I mean, I was. I did. Uh, however, something came up. And you let a criminal get away? If you had any idea of what it was like here in the last few days... I thought this was the world's best law enforcement agency. Can't you people do anything right? As a matter of fact, Ms. Hogan, uh, we Miles. do on a daily basis, on cases that I can't discuss and you wouldn't want to hear about anyway. And sometimes they take precedence over your silly little art scam thing. I will not be spoken to in that manner. Your supervisor will hear from me about this. I can't believe the incompetence of this place. I heard that! So did I. I don't think that was very nice. I forgot how noisy life can be, but it's a good noisy. Well, now you have a choice. If you want to hear it, you can turn it on. If you don't, you can turn it off. Uh, oh, Troy's got some good news. Oh, what's your good news? Troy got an A on his documentary. Hey, fighting Cecil B. DeMille. Congratulations. What do you say? He wanted to apologize again for shooting at your housewarming party. Yeah, I'm sorry. Without permission. And knew you needed a new painting, so he painted you one. Uh. It's also called Steady at Night. Now that actually looks like DC at night. Good work. Hey, your regular Rembrandt. Thank you. It's beautiful. You don't have to have this one authenticated. You know the artist personally. <laughs> <laughs>